The situation in commercial real estate has echoes of 2008, with high valuations, falling prices, but also distressed lenders combining to create a fairly toxic cocktail. So in this video, we look at exactly what's happening right now in the commercial real estate sector, but also consider what the consequences of this unfolding crisis might be. This video is sponsored by Trading212, which is a UK commission-free investment platform. So let's look at the commercial real estate market in a bit more detail. Let's begin by looking at the US commercial real estate market to see how it's structured. The first point is that the US commercial real estate market is very large. So beside me here, you can see the financial stability report from the Federal Reserve, and it lists the size of various markets in the US. Notice how large the commercial real estate sector is. Residential real estate is the biggest market by far at about $56 trillion. Then the equity market is about $47 trillion. But tied in third and fourth places is the US Treasury market, which is $24 trillion, as is the commercial real estate market. So when something goes wrong in commercial real estate, it can have very large secondary effects in other markets. Now this is not a homogeneous market. Beside me here you can see the actual composition of the US commercial real estate market broken down into those sectors. The three largest are multifamily, so that would be things like apartment blocks where lots of households live together in one building, so that's just under $4 trillion. Then we have office real estate. Clearly that's not in a great state right now, given what's happened after the pandemic, as more people are choosing to work from home. And the third largest sector is retail. So that would be things like shopping malls. Now that's been in distress for some time because of the move to online shopping. We also have a very large other sector, which includes things like specialty commercial real estate, but also sports real estate and other. But some of these sectors are defensive. For example, healthcare would see probably good demand even through a period of weak economic growth. But what we're seeing right now is some of these largest sectors are in a state of distress, and that's going to have consequences. So what we're going to do now is go through four problems in the commercial real estate market, which is facing right now, and the reasons behind them. Problem number one, which is faced by many sectors right now, is higher interest rates. Now, during the period of really low interest rates, which lasted a decade, we had very little alternatives in terms of asset classes which generated a good income. Treasuries were yielding almost nothing, so was investment grade debt, even high yield offered very little. So to yield starved investors, the property yield, which is the income generated by owning things like real estate investment trusts, was very attractive. But as interest rates have been gradually increasing, now it's not so attractive to buy commercial real estate if you can earn over 5%, say, with the US Treasury. Another problem is that as interest rates have increased, now some of the funding for these projects, commercial real estate projects, is going to have to pick up that higher cost. Some projects locked in the funding for a long period of time, so that's not a problem. But a lot of these commercial real estate projects are funded with fairly short-term loans, and these are going to pick up higher rates when they have to be rolled over. But it's certainly not the case that all sectors in commercial real estate will suffer from higher rates. For example, one sector that could actually benefit is multifamily housing. And that's because these are potential home buyers. But if the cost of buying a house is now out of reach because of the funding costs going up, then it could be that these people will have to rent for longer. And that means the occupancy rates for multifamily housing will probably remain high. Also, the demand for that kind of housing will remain very brisk. So certainly for some of these sectors, higher interest rates are not a problem. Now, if we look at the actual yield generated by commercial real estate, the measure which is often used in CRE is something called the cap rate or capitalization rate. That's simply the income which is generated by a property, say, divided by the price. So that's kind of like a dividend yield for a stock. Now, when that cap rate is low, it means that commercial real estate is relatively expensive. And also, if you look at the current cap rate, notice how it's been gradually trending downwards for almost two decades now, such that the cap rate at the moment isn't that much above what you'd get with some treasuries. So that makes it a less attractive asset class, and we can also see that it's still very highly valued. 
there's a lot of room for downgrades and also for falls in price from this point onwards. Now I'd like to thank Trading212 which is sponsoring this video and it's a platform I've been using for some time now in the UK for my fund portfolio. And beyond being a very low fee platform, which I love, you don't pay commission on your trades, it has lots of great features. Firstly, it has pies, so you can create portfolios which you can rebalance very easily. Rebalancing is often a pain because some assets increase in value, others fall in value, and you want to keep the weight in your portfolio roughly the same. That's usually quite tricky. You have to sell some, buy another. With this, with a Pi feature, you just click one button to rebalance. That's very easy. Another thing which Pies let you do is copy other people's portfolios. I've published five Pies, for example. They're called the Asset Mix Portfolios, if you want to find them. And these let you copy other people's ideas if you want to, but also track how well those portfolios have done over time. And there's a third thing you can do with Pies, which I think is great because it instills a good discipline, which is to save regularly. If you have auto invest, you can automatically move money into the same portfolios on a regular basis, almost automatically. Of course, you can stop that at any time you want, but I think that kind of discipline of regular investing is what sets apart really great investors from not so great investors. Now, if you are interested in learning more about Trading212, there's also a special offer for viewers of PensionCraft where you can get a stock worth up to £100. To get access to that is very easy. All you have to do is create and verify your Trading212 account, make a deposit of at least £1, and use the promo code, which is my first name, Romin, R-A-M-I-N. Problem number two is how commercial real estate is funded. A lot of this is now through bank loans. Going back to that financial stability report from the Fed, we can see how the breakdown of bank loans is structured. So about $29 trillion of loans are coming from the banking sector in the United States, and a big chunk of that is from GSIBs. These are the globally systemically important banks like JP Morgan, which have fortress balance sheets. That's not so much of a worry. But if you look further down that list, you'll see category two to four banks. These are smaller banks which don't have such strong balance sheets and which aren't systemically important. So they have about $7 trillion of loans outstanding. And then if you look at the other category, which is even smaller banks, presumably, they also lend about $7 trillion into the commercial real estate sector. Another sector which is usually thought of as being safe in terms of its investments is life insurers, which lend about $5 trillion. Now, of course, regional banks in the United States are still reeling from the crisis where they had lots of deposit flight. Now, if that's still a worry for these banks, which of course it is, then they're going to be cutting back on their lending and very careful about who they lend their money to. They really can't afford to have another crisis triggered by falling asset values. Now, this problem with bank loans to commercial real estate has been highlighted by none other than Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's sidekick at Berkshire Hathaway. And as you can see in this headline from EFT, he's saying US banks are full of bad commercial property loans. But he does say that it's not as bad as it was in 2008. And he goes on to say that a lot of real estate isn't so good anymore. We have a lot of troubled office buildings, a lot of troubled shopping centres, a lot of troubled other properties. And there's a lot of agony out there. Every bank in the country is way tighter on real estate loans today than they were six months ago. They all seem to be too much trouble. And if we look at the Senior Loan Officers Survey, you can see when banks are tightening up on their credit standards where the bars go red. And for loans to small firms, that's the top panel you can see. And for large and middle market firms, that's the bottom panel. You can see that they are tightening up on their lending standards very sharply. About 50% of banks are making their credit conditions tighter. That means it's going to be harder to get a loan for commercial real estate. Now, what's kind of interesting is that prices really haven't started falling in commercial real estate yet. We have seen them come off their all-time highs recently, but still, I think we've got a lot further to go. Now, this is a problem because the loan to value on one of these commercial real estate loans, that's the proportion of the total value of the property which the loan makes up. As the value of the property falls, that actually increases the loan to value. 
because of course the size of the loan doesn't change. The higher loan to value means that it's going to be tricky to roll over these loans as property prices fall, because effectively what's happening is that the loan itself is becoming more risky. So what always happens when we get a falling price in commercial property is this kind of downward spiral. Prices fall, LTV values increase, and rolling over the debt gets more difficult and more expensive. The third problem is lower revenue. So to quote from the Fed's financial stability report, the shift towards telework in many industries has dramatically reduced demand for office space, which could lead to a correction in the values of office buildings and downtown retail properties that largely depend on office workers. So beside me here, you can see the vacancy rate in San Francisco offices and it's simply shot up to unprecedented levels. We're now way above 25% in terms of vacancy rate. And there's also no sign that that's actually coming back down, at least so far. Now, it's not just a US phenomenon. So if you look at UK office space, you're also seeing vacancy rates increase very rapidly. Not as much as in the US in San Francisco, as we just saw, but still increasing a lot. Now, if vacancy rates are increasing at the same time as funding costs are increasing, that means lower revenue for commercial real estate. And a lot of these commercial real estate sectors are sensitive to the economic cycle. If activity falls, then you'd expect the revenue for many of the sectors to also start falling. The fourth problem is a maturity wall. So here I am breaking through a maturity wall. What is it? Well, what it means is that if you've locked in a loan for, say, two years, you can't suddenly turn around at the end of two years and pay back all the money. What you have to do is find a new loan or roll over your debt, as it's called. So as a recent research report from Morgan Stanley points out, there's actually one and a half trillion dollar wall of debt looming for US commercial properties. So this simultaneous problem of falling revenue at the same time as you've got higher funding costs is going to erode the value of many sectors in commercial real estate, particularly office and retail property. Remember, those were two of the largest sectors. And Morgan Stanley expects that prices could fall by as much as 40% for those two. And in this graph from Bloomberg, which is also from that article, you can see that the regional and local banks are big lenders to those two sectors, retail and offices. So that doesn't bode well in terms of rolling over the debt, particularly because these banks will be really careful about who they lend their money to. So what are the secondary impacts of this unfolding crisis in US commercial real estate? Well, this table from the Commercial Real Estate Development Association in the United States shows what proportion of GDP in the US comes either directly or indirectly from commercial real estate. Now, bear in mind, this is a lobbying organization for the sector, so you should take this with a grain of salt. But if you actually look at the size, it's huge. Gradually, since 2011, the percent contribution to GDP has been creeping up to about a fifth of the US economy. Now, that's because it employs a lot of people constructing new real estate, but also maintaining existing real estate and developing older real estate. Now, the secondary impacts come because it's going to employ a lot of people and it's going to employ lots of subsectors. For example, they're going to need concrete for the construction. They're going to need maintenance workers in order to keep the properties functioning and well refurbished. So if there is a slowdown in commercial real estate in the US and elsewhere, it's going to have a big negative impact on US growth. So this could be the thing which essentially drives the US into a recession. And a secondary problem, which will stem from the loans going bad in commercial real estate, is the nature of the lenders. As we saw, lots of regional banks are lending into the commercial real estate market. And if we zoom in on this graph from BBAE, what they've done is a really nice breakdown of the percentage of loans on the asset side of the balance sheet for lots of US regional banks. And it's the proportion of their loans which are to the commercial real estate sector. Now, notice that lots of these banks at the top of the list have exposures of more than 50%. So deterioration of those loans as the real estate market goes into reverse is going to have a negative impact on the banking sector, the regional banking sector, which is already beaten up. 
and that in turn is going to have an impact on small companies in the United States, which depend on these banks for lending, and it's the lifeblood of growth in the United States. So there's no question, I think, that commercial real estate could cause a lot of unpleasant fallout. Probably the best case is that we're just going to see a correction in prices, and that will remain contained in the sector itself. But I think the possibility of contagion in terms of growth, but also fallout into other sectors and into the broader equity market is certainly a possibility. So this is definitely one to watch. Now, don't forget our offer from Trading212. You'll see a link in the description beneath me if you want to find out more about that. And as always, thank you for listening.